today we will be looking at a situation of partially owned subsidiary and what we mean by partially owned subsidiary is a situation whereby the parent company buy less than 100% of the equity capital of a subsidiary but still more than 50%. So if I have more than 50% of the equity capital of a subsidiary company but less than 100% of that share capital, it means that it is a partially owned subsidiary. And this will bring about what we call non-controlling interest. In our previous video, we explained that non-controlling interest is the portion of the equity capital that is not owned by the parent corporation. So we'll be looking at how to consolidate with non-controlling interest today. And taking this question as an example, the, the statement of financial position of two companies are as follows. Nigeria and Abuja, we are given the asset of the two companies to be 500 and 500. Investment in Abuja is 350. We are given the equity share capital. We are given the retained earnings, the liability, and the total equity and liability. So, and the additional note says, Nigeria has today acquired 160 million of Abuja 200 million shares. In our last video, I tried to explain something. If my company acquire a subsidiary company as of today, and I'm also consolidating as of today, it means that my date of acquisition is the same thing as the date of reporting. Very easy. The value of the non-controlling interest as at that date is 60 million. Very easy. Prepare the consolidated statement of financial position as at that date. Don't forget that we said to do our statement of financial position, our consolidated statement of financial position. We have numerous workings, but the five common workings are Determination of your group structure, determination of your net asset of subsidiary, determination of your goodwill, determination of your non-controlling interest, and the computation of your group or parent retained earnings. So how do we go about that with this question? So let us start. So yeah, the first thing I have to do is to prepare my group structure, to determine my group structure. And I said, how do, what do I need to know under group structure? I just want to know the percentage holding of the parent company. Aside from knowing the percentage holding of the parent company, I'm interested on the date they acquire that subsidiary. So in this case, how will I know the percentage holding in the subsidiary? Very easy and straight come to my additional notes. The question says, Nigeria as of today acquired 160 million of Abuja 200 million shares. The total shares available in Abuja is 200 million shares. Only Nigeria acquired 160 million of that shares. So how many percent is that? So that is why I come to this place and I said, I acquire 160 million shares out of 200 million shares times 100, giving me what? 80%. So Nigeria PLC, in this case, own 80% of Abuja equity share capital. So if Nigeria own 80%, don't forget, your non-controlling interest is defined as the portion of that equity capital that is not owned by the parent. So in this case, my non-controlling interest account for only 20%. Very easy. So we can move to the next workings, which is determination of net asset of subsidiary. Don't forget, 
from our previous knowledge, I will come to equity of which company of the subsidiary, which is Abuja. So if I come to Abuja, what will I do? I will pick ordinary share, which is 200, and I will pick my retained earnings, which is what? 100. So coming to this place, I have, at the date of acquisition, I have 200 and 100. But don't forget, when do we acquire this company? This company is acquired as that today. If the company is acquired as that today, it means that the date of acquisition is the same thing as the date of reporting. So the figure at the date of acquisition will just be repeated at the date of what? Reporting. Very easy. I acquire my company January 1. I also consolidate January 1. It means that the same date, the same figure will be for the date of reporting and acquisition, thereby giving me my post-acquisition profit to be zero. So we are done with note two in this question. So what will I do next? I have to go to note three. And what is my note three? My note three is the determination of goodwill. And don't forget, in our previous video, we said to get your goodwill, you need the fair value of consideration transferred by parent. That is, for me to acquire this 80% of the equity share capital of Abuja, I have to furnish some consideration. I have to pay some money. Sometimes it can be share exchange that I need to know the value of the consideration they transfer to the subsidiary. And according to this question, if I come to the statement of financial position of Nigeria, you can see that investment in Abuja is 350. So investment in Abuja is 350 million dollars. What will happen? I will come here and bring it in. Fair value of consideration transfer by parents, 350 million. Now, what do I do next? I add my non-controlling interest. Don't forget. Your non-controlling interest, in this question, go to your additional notes. The value of non-controlling interest, as at this date, is 60 million. So I will come here, my non-controlling interest is 60 million. I break it in very easy and straight. Though there is a way you can calculate your non-controlling interest yourself, but we are not looking at that yet in our future video we'll be looking at how to compute non-controlling interest in case the examiner wants you to calculate it yourself so but most questions they will just give you directly that your non-controlling interest for example in this question we are told that our non-controlling interest is given to us as 60 million which is very good so i bring it in the air 60. if i add these two together it will give me a total of 410 million. Don't forget, what do you do next? You list your net asset of the subsidiary company as at the date of acquisition, which is in your workings too. So coming to my workings two year, the date of acquisition, I have 300. So if I come here, I will list 300, which give me a goodwill of 110 million. Very easy. Now, in some questions, you can have impairment of goodwill. Assuming there is impairment of goodwill, what do I do? I, I less it from 110. I then get my final goodwill. But in this question, there is no impairment. So, that is the end of my goodwill. What can I do next? I move to the next workings. And what is my next workings? Determination of non-controlling interest. Now, I will come here. According to this question, we are told, we are given that non-controlling interest is 60 million. So I bring it in. Now, because they own 20% of this business, if there is any profit in this business, they are entitled to 20% of that profit. But if you check your workings too, which is net asset of subsidiary, we can see that post-acquisition profit is zero. So the post acquisition they will share is 20% of zero, which give me nothing. And the value of my non-controlling interest will give me a balance of 60. Very easy and straight. 
after that i can move to note five and what is your note five retained earnings and to do your retained earnings is very easy don't forget the retained earnings is for the parent company which is nigeria in this case so i will have to bring my balance down and what is my balance i will come here retain earnings of parents the retain earnings of parents in this case is 250 million which is very glaring so if i bring this 250 million i will bring it forward so my balance brought forward is 250 don't forget the parent company in this case own 80 percent of this business automatically they will be entitled to 80 percent of any profit which can come as a result of investing in this business but in this question as seen in our workings too you can see that our post acquisition profit is a zero so they are entitled to 80 percent of that post acquisition profit which is zero that is why in this case we have zero giving me my total retained earnings to be 250. this is a very simple question and that is our basic workings now the question is after i've gotten my basic workings i can then go to prepare the consolidated statement of financial position so we are told that step one is to add your assets together add your liability together so very simple i will come here under other assets other assets of parent and subsidiary is 500 and 500 what do i do i will add it together here giving me a total of 1000 after that don't forget your goodwill according to your working three i can go back to my working three and in my working three we can see that goodwill is 110 so if i come to this place my goodwill is 110 don't forget we are told that whenever you are consolidating the investment in the subsidiary have to be eliminated why you cannot invest in yourself because abuja and nigeria are now coming together as a single entity which makes them one company so any investments in abuja have to be eliminated because it is an intergroup transaction it have to be eliminated so in that case what do i do i can get my total assets to be 1110 million dollars very easy so after that i can move to the equity aspect and let me remind you again i said in our last video you don't consolidate the equity of the subsidiary you don't consolidate the equity of the subsidiary the only thing you consult the only thing you bring under equity is the equity of the parent company that is why my ordinary shares here is only the one for the parent company which is 100 so i will come here and i put 100 after that i go to retain earnings don't forget we calculate our retained earnings in workings five above which give us a total of 250 adding it together give us 350 so the next thing is to add our non-controlling interest our non-controlling interest as calculated in note 4 give us a total of 60 so therefore my total equity capital is 410 very easy so i can come back to my question don't forget i add my liability coming to my liability what is my total liability parent and subsidiary which is nigeria and abuja give me 500 and 200 coming here my liability is 500 and 200 which is 700 so my total equity and liability as at this date give us 1110 which make our account balance and that is the end for this question for question two the statement of financial position of two companies are as follows we are given israel and jerusalem 
the tangible assets of two companies are 100 and 250 investment in jerusalem is 400 my current asset is 300 and 350 ordinary shares is 250 and 200 retained earnings is 250 and 100 current non-current liability 140 and 170 current liability 160 and 130 so additional note says israel acquired 150 million shares in jerusalem one year ago when retained earnings of jerusalem were 60 million dollars and the value of nci in jerusalem was 65 million prepare the consolidated statement of financial position so we move to our workings one which is determination of group structure now very easy the total shares available in jerusalem we need to determine it and how do i go about that unlike the first question whereby we are told that they purchase so 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 amount of shares from so 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 amount but in this question we are not told but we can check if you come to equity in this case you can see equity of jerusalem to be 200 million dollars whereas the ordinary shares is one dollar each so it means that if it is one dollar each how many shares will i have for me to be able to raise 200 million very easy so 200 million divided by one dollars make us to have 200 million shares so it means that the total shares available in jerusalem as at this date is 200 million but coming to our additional note we are told that we acquire 150 million of that shares so to determine my group structure i have 150 million divided by 200 million multiplied by 100 which give me 75 percent so that is from one year ago very easy if parent acquire 75 percent of that automatically my non-controlling interest will be the remaining 25 percent very easy so we can move to our next workings which is the net asset of subsidiary and in this case the date of acquisition is not the same thing as the date of reporting why come to your additional note you are told that they acquired this company one year ago so which means that date of acquisition is a year ago why today is the date of reporting but what will happen i will come to ordinary shares what is the ordinary shares of subsidiary company as given in this place is 200 now at the date of reporting and at the date of acquisition it will be the same now why because since that time that we purchased the company they have not issued additional shares so as at that time the ordinary share was 200 till today it is still 200 but what about retained earnings as given in this question my retained earnings as at today is 100 which is the date of reporting but don't forget come to your additional notes in your additional notes the question says one year israel acquire 150 million shares in jerusalem one year ago and as at that time the retained earnings of jerusalem was 60 million dollars very easy coming to this place my retained earnings at the date of acquisition is 60 million which give me my post acquisition retained earnings to be 40 very easy so i can get my total year and i am done with workings too so what is the next thing i go to determination of goodwill and how do we go about that we said the first thing to determine goodwill is to know the compensation which the parent company pay to the owner of the subsidiary company to acquire those shares and in this question very easy coming to this place investment in jerusalem from israel is how much is 400 million dollars what will i do i will come to this place fair value of consideration transfer 400 
and what add non-controlling interest very easy as given to us our non-controlling interest in jerusalem was valued at 65 million i told you that in our subsequent video we'll be looking at a situation whereby we will be the one to calculate the value of our nci ourselves but for now our nci is given to be 65 million dollars what will happen i will bring it here 65 giving me a total of 465 million so what do i do i list the net asset of my subsidiary at the date of acquisition don't forget at the date of acquisition which is in your workings too coming to my workings too you can see that my net asset at the date of acquisition is 260 million bringing it here if i let my 260 it will give me a balance of 205 now if there is impairment what will i do i will less impairment from this 205 to get my final goodwill but since there is no impairment what do i have my goodwill for the period is 205. Very easy. I can move to workings 4, which is determination of non-controlling interest. As we all know, as given in this question, we are given that non-controlling interest in this question is 65. So I'll bring it down. If it is 65, easy. Don't forget, in this business, the parent company owns 75%. The, sub, the NCI owns 25%. So any post-acquisition profits that we have in this question, NCI is entitled to, to get 25% of that profit. So in this case, very easy. I will just come here. 25% of what? Of my post-acquisition profit, which is given in this place, to be 40. So I will come here. That is 25% of 40, which gives me a total of 10. And my non-controlling interest in this case gave us 75. And what do we do next? We move to the next workings, which is determination of retained earnings. Don't forget, you will come back to your account. What is the balance brought forward? of retained earnings of parent retained earnings of parent in this case is 250 so i will come here balance brought forward is 250 and don't forget again the company owns 75 percent of this subsidiary if i own 75 percent of this subsidiary it means that i'm going to take 75 percent of the post acquisition profits and what is our post acquisition profit in this case my post acquisition profit in this case is 40 so 40 multiplied by 75 percent will give me 30 which give us a total of 280 and after that what do we do we can then move to the consolidation which is very very easy we will now be looking at how this will look when we are preparing our consolidated statement of financial position so what is the first thing I need to add my tangible asset together what is my tangible asset I have hundred and two fifty so coming here my hundred and two fifty give me a total of three fifty don't forget you don't consolidate investment in your subsidiary it will be eliminated so the next thing is to bring in my goodwill as calculated in our note 3 we are told that our goodwill is 205 which give us a total non-current asset of 555 after that i will come to this place what is my current asset i have 300 and 350 adding it together give me a total of 650 and my total asset to be 1000 205 million dollars very easy i can then move to my equity again you don't consolidate equity of subsidiary so i will come here what is the ordinary share of parent company 250 giving me this after that what do i do i go to retain earnings as calculated in note 5 and our retain earnings as calculated in note 5 is 280 Bringing it here, give me a total of 530. 
So after that, I go to non-controlling interest as computed in note 4. We got our non-controlling interest to be 75, which got, gave us a total equity of 605. After that, what do you do? You come back to your question. You have to consolidate your non-current liability. And what is the non-current liability of these two companies? 140 and 170. Coming here, 140 and 170 will give me 310. So after that, I go to current liability. My current liability is 160 and 130, giving me a total of 290. So summing it together, we get our total equity and liability to be $1,205 million. And as you can see, that consolidating either with only owned subsidiary or with partially owned subsidiary are very easy but you need to keep practicing once you practice and you understand all the steps involved it is something very easy so don't forget to subscribe to my youtube channel for more amazing video like this and in next video we will be looking at how to calculate fair value of consideration transfer by parent.